Hey guys, Richard Scout with Green Mountain Horsemanship. I got a really good question about um, the last video I put up that was about saddling your horse and some, some tips to saddling uh, with the western saddle. And one of the things that I said in the video was your horse ought to be able to stand untied for the brushing, uh, all the grooming, the hoof picking, the saddling, and the mounting. And one, one person asked, well how do, you, how do you saddle a horse that walks off when you saddle him? And the easy answer to that is, well, I don't saddle a horse if he's walking off. I saddle them when they're standing still. So let me explain that a little bit. If a horse is going to be walking off on me when I'm trying to saddle him, I'm not going to saddle him. That means that I need to do more preparation to cause my horse to stand still for the saddling grooming process. This is Hootie. He's, uh, he's three years old, but coming three. He's had about ten rides on him, so if in my... In my barn with our personal horses, if we did have one that kind of wanted to walk off, then he'd be the one. Something that a lot of people do that I've just kind of noticed in, in my clinics and teaching lessons and stuff, is people go catch their horse either from the stall or from the pasture. They take them, they tie them up to the trainer, they tie them up to the fence, and then they start brushing them and they start saddling them. It's kind of like, kind of like if I was on a road trip with my kids, and I took him out of the truck and I said, hey, let's sit down and do our homework. Well, they got all that amped up energy, they got all that amped up emotion, and they want to get out and they want to run and they want to play. The last thing I'm going to do is say, hey, sit down and do your homework. They're not going to do their homework. It's going to be a big fight. So one thing you want to do is you want to prepare your horse for the grooming, prepare your horse for the saddling. If you get your horse out and they want to move their feet, then go play with them. Leave them dirty. Don't tack them up. Just go play with them. Do kind of do some floating half circles. Do some figure eights. You know, get them going on a circle around you for five, ten laps. If they want to move their feet, respect that. Say so you can go move your feet. And then once they start saying, "Well, geez, me moving my feet wasn't as good of an idea as I thought," then that's when you come back to the tacking up and you say, "Ah, why don't we stand still and let me tack you up or brush your fly spray?" It. And the horse will say, "Hey, that's a pretty good idea because I thought I wanted to move my feet." You moved my feet a little bit more than maybe I wanted to, so now I'll stand still for you. So I've taken the liberty of just kind of playing with him a little bit, moving his feet a little bit, to kind of prepare him for the brushing. One thing I do, and I try not to drop my brushes, but hey, it happens. When I'm brushing a horse, or saddling a horse, I'll just throw that lead line over my lead rope throw the lead rope over my arm. With my buckskin mare, I threw it up over her neck because she's kind of been there, done that, she's traveled with me, she's, she's, she's pretty reliable. This guy's not as reliable, so I just keep that lead rope over my arm. So just in case he wants to go away from me, I just got a little bit more control of him. So I'll just keep that lead line over my, my arm, brush him up. If he was to walk away, I wouldn't massacre him, I wouldn't crucify him, I'd just pick my arm up. Say, hey, why don't we stop moving off on me? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold him up here as I brush him. It's his job to stand still. It's my job to cause him to want to, want to stand still, but it's his job to stand still. So we brush him. I'll ask him to move his front end over for me, and then I just put the lead line over my right arm. As he gets a bit more trustworthy and a bit more accustomed to things happening around him, well then I'll just throw the lead rope over his, over his neck and he'll learn to just stand there. But right now, I just pick my arm up. I can keep rushing him, and I just pick my arm up. If he moves on me, then I'm going to move with him. I'm going to stay right here at this shoulder if he goes to moving. Because what he's saying is maybe I don't want you standing there, so I'm going to back up. So if I don't back up with him, but I stop and drag him forward, 
and put him back where he was standing, well, then he puts a check in his box. He says, I don't want you standing at my shoulder. I moved my feet, and then you quit brushing me and brought me back up there. So kind of game over. So if he moves, I'm just going to move with him. And I'm going to stay at his shoulder and brush him. I'm not going to make it too pretty today. Just brush him where the saddle goes. And rub on your horses. Don't ever be afraid to rub on your horses. Let them know they're doing the right thing. Now I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people that say, I always saddle from the left side. Or they say, I always saddle from the right side. Well, I don't say always. I like to spice it up a little bit. Especially on a greener horse like he is, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put the saddle pad on from the left side, and then I'll walk around to the right side, and I'll put the saddle on from the right side. That way the horse gets used to commotion going on all around it. I'll generally put a saddle and the pad on from the right side. It just saves me a few steps. But I'm not afraid at all to saddle from the left side to break it up a little bit for the benefit of the horse. Just to have things thrown up on the left side and then all of a sudden have things thrown up from the right side. I'll saddle from the left side just so the horse gets used to the cinches and that extra weight coming over on the right side instead of just saddling from the right side so he gets just used to the <coughs> the stirrup and not the cinches coming down on the left side. So don't always say always. Mix it up a little bit. So I'll get my pad here. I'll try to get them sideways for you. Rope just draped over my arm. That way I can, I can control his head a little bit. I'll stand right by his shoulder, and when I set my pad on, I want to set it down. I don't want to flop it. I don't want to be rough with it. Just set it down there. No big deal. I'm not going to saddle this horse any differently than, I'll, than I saddled my buckskin horse. I wouldn't saddle a horse for the very first time necessarily any different than I would him. When you're starting colts and saddling a horse for the first time, some things pop up, but generally it's all the same. So now I'm going to go to the right, or have him give me his right side, and I'll put the saddle on his right side. I'll cause him to move his feet. Every time he stands still, I'll give him a rub. Boy. Get your saddle. Stand at his shoulder. Rub on him. When I set the saddle on, I'm going to aim for up here. I'm not going to aim for right here. A lot of people aim at the, the top of the horse's back, and then they end up hitting down here. If I aim up here, then I'll probably end up coming in down here somewhere, so I'm still not whacking him in his back. Hold the saddle by the cantle, put it up in your armpit like that. Grab the front of your saddle, and what I'm going to do is get it untangled from my knife there, is I'm going to swing it. I want those saddle strings swinging, and I want that stirrup swinging, and I'm going to aim up here. I want this saddle to set nicely on my horse's back. I'll turn, and have that saddle set on there just like that. You don't want that saddle to flop on their backs. You want to set it on there. When you take the saddle off a horse, don't just pull it off. that will kind of tweak the withers a little bit. So what I like to do, I like to unweight it, come back with it, and drag it off. So cantle with your left hand. Your right hand's holding the front of the saddle. Get them saddle strings swinging. Aim for up here, and I'll twist my body as I set that saddle onto his back. 
You don't want that off stirrup smacking their shoulder or anything. You want to set it on there as gently as possible. The reason I saddle from the right side most of the time is it saves me an extra step. I can just undo my cinches, set them down so they don't bang any knees or anything. Make sure all my saddle strings are nice and tight. Now cause him to give me his left side. <clears throat> and just like in the other video, since it's a western saddle, the steps that I'll do is I'll reach down, I'll do my front cinch up first, and I'm doing the same thing I said that I did in my other video, by holding the cinch up and then doing my latigo. I'll do this just tight enough to keep the saddle on. I'm not going to cut him in half. He walks backwards, I walk with him. See that? So he's not escaping me. I'm staying with him. And I do the back cinch. Now this guy's too narrow, so I don't ride with a breast collar on him. Set the stirrup down softly. This guy's too narrow, so I don't ride with a breast collar on him. But just like in the other video, you do the front cinch, the back cinch, and then your breast collar. And then to unsaddle him, you undo your breast collar, your back cinch, and then your front cinch. So, the takeaways for this lesson would be to prepare your horse for the grooming and prepare your horse for the saddling process. Take them out of the stall, take them out of the pasture, do some floating, floating half circles, do some figure eights, do some backups, do some transitions so that horse is listening to you and moving their feet. And then you give them the opportunity to not move their feet during the saddling process. And if they really want to move their feet during the saddling process, then go out and move their feet some more. And then come back and offer them the opportunity to stand still. Don't stand here and fight with your horse. Okay? Prepare them for the saddling and prepare them for the grooming. Heaven forbid you go out there and you're playing with your horse and they're dirty. It's no big deal. I'd rather have a well-behaved horse during the saddling process than a clean horse. So hope that helped. If you guys have any questions at all about anything that I'm saying, go to Remount Horsemanship's Facebook page. Ask me a question. Shoot me an email at remounthorsemanship at gmail.com. Subscribe to our YouTube page. I'd love to hear from you guys. I don't know if I'll put videos up to answer all of your questions. Um, I'm the videographer, I'm the editor, I'm the trainer, I'm the, I do, I do everything. So you probably won't get a video every time. But shoot me a question if you have it. I'll be more than happy to help you out as best I can. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you have a great day. Now get outside and ride.